Japan is a land of great beauty. Mountains, temples, forests, and of course, tea. It is here that our adventure takes place. We journey through cities, towns, and countrysides in search of some of the world's best tea. In Japan, tea holds a special place in people's hearts. To some, it is a livelihood. To others, it is a ceremony, and to us, it is a never-ending quest. Every trip to Japan holds new lessons, new acquaintances, and new stories. This particular story begins in Tokyo, Japan's largest city. In this city, we see how tea has found its way into people's lives. We explore the innovative ways they have adapted this ancient drink into the modern age. We then head into the fields of Shizuoka to visit a few small family farms and see how they are making a living off tea farming without the use of pesticides or chemicals. We then head off to the old capital of Kyoto to trace down the origins of tea. From the sacred halls of Buddhist temples in Kyoto to the tatami mats of tea houses in Uji, tea played a crucial role in the development of medieval Japanese culture. We make a few stops at key historical sites along the way and examine what role they played in making tea what it is today. Finally, we head out to the South Island of Kyushu and explore the unique climate of this volcanic subtropical island. The soil here is rich and the climate is mild, making it ideal for growing organic green tea. Throughout this quest, we find an even deeper appreciation for what this drink means. In the last thousand years, tea has found a way to touch every single strata of Japanese society. Tea has a kind of magic to it that draws people in from all around. Whether they experience the ritual of the tea ceremony or simply enjoy a cup of tea with a friend, there is no doubt that tea has the power to transform. This is the purpose of our quest, to capture the magic of tea and to share it with the world. Hey everybody, it's Will here. I'm about to head off to Tokyo uh, to explore some tea culture, tea history, and of course some tea farms as well. Um, so for the next few weeks, we're gonna be taking a deep dive into um, Japanese tea history. Um, we're gonna be visiting some farms to see how tea is produced and how it's been produced over the years. Uh, we're also gonna be checking out some cool historical sites to see um, where tea really first got started in Japan. Uh, and how it became the world famous beverage that it is today. Immediately upon arriving in Tokyo, I was reminded at just how much there was to do in this city. At times, Tokyo seems to be a constant barrage of lights and excitement, but I wasn't interested in that. I was on a quest to find tea. No, not that kind of tea. This kind of tea. My first stop was a tea shop called Sario, a place that just recently opened in the last few years. This tea shop was an attempt to breathe some fresh life into Tokyo's tea culture. Hey everybody, I'm in a quiet neighborhood in Tokyo right now, about to go into Sadio, one of the world's first drip green tea cafes. Rather than preparing the tea in a teapot, at Sadio, they place the green tea into a ceramic cone with a wooden stopper at the bottom. After letting the tea sit for a few seconds, it's then ready to pour out. By lifting up the ceramic cone, the tea pours through the small holes in the wooden stopper and into the pitcher. The tea is then ready to be served to the guest. To add a little extra flavor to the third steeping, they add in a spoonful of toasted rice to the tea leaves to create a delicious genmaicha. Normally the flavor of a green tea begins to fade at around the third steeping, so this is a way to make the third steeping just as exciting as the first. One thing that really interested me was this clear teapot they had on display. This is essentially a modern version of the traditional Japanese Kyusu teapot. This teapot is perfectly designed to match the lifestyle of the modern Tokyo tea lover. 
It is unbreakable so it can be taken with you to work. It can be cleaned in the dishwasher and they can be stacked together to save space. While some tea purists may object to this, it is just one of the many ways that Japanese tea companies use new innovations to keep up with changing consumer habits. This made me curious to find out other ways in which tea culture was evolving. I headed out to Shibuya to see how people consume tea in one of Tokyo's busiest wards. In the popular department store Don Quixote, you can find an entire wall dedicated to bottled green tea. So I finally found the product I've been searching all over Tokyo for. This is the Matcha Love from Ito End, um, and it's a traditional drink with a surprising new twist. And that twist is when you actually twist this cap here, it releases a chamber of pressurized air that pumps the matcha into the drink and then you just kind of shake it up here. Bottled green tea is now the most popular form of tea consumption in Japan. This is thanks to the vending machines located at nearly every street corner in Tokyo. They keep the drinks cold in the summer and offer some hot drinks in the winter. While this may not seem like the best way to drink green tea, it has allowed unsweetened green tea to outsell both coffee and soda. In Tokyo, people are constantly on the move, but they still find time to fit tea into their busy lifestyle. But tea is more than just a drink. It's also an opportunity to enjoy a moment with friends. I decided to walk over to Gengen An, a trendy tea shop just a few blocks away from Don Quixote. Here you could enjoy a cup of hojicha or sencha with friends and listen to music. In Tokyo, when a young cafe opens up, it is normally centered around coffee, but the fact that this place is around just shows you that tea still has a relevant place in youth culture. This is a promising sign for the future of the tea industry. But what if you only have time for tea when you're on your lunch break? If you want to enjoy tea with your meal, you can sit down for lunch at one of the many tea cafes in this area. I was particularly curious about checking out a place called Chacha Noma in a Motesando. Here, tea is the main event, and food is just an added bonus. This cafe has found a way to put a more theatrical spin on the more traditional methods of tea preparation. Here, guests can watch the tea masters prepare their favorite drinks such as matcha and sencha right in front of them while they eat. They also are able to make kori dashi, an ice brewed tea that uses the water from melted ice to make a delicious and concentrated cold brew. But green tea is not just consumed by the locals. Millions of tourists come to Japan every year eager to take part in Japanese tea culture. Of course, more often than not, tourists are consuming tea in the form of matcha ice cream, matcha sweets, and matcha Kit Kats. In Japan, wherever you find tourists, you are sure to find these matcha desserts as well. The matcha desserts, like the ones found here outside Asakusa Temple, are made from lower quality matcha powder known as culinary grade matcha. This matcha is often very bitter and so it is usually only used alongside cream and sugar. Ceremonial grade matcha comes from shade grown first harvest leaves. The leaves then have their stems and veins removed to make them even sweeter. Once the stems have been removed, the leaves are ground in a stone mill and the precious green powder that is produced is called ceremonial grade matcha. Because it is naturally sweet, it is simply whisked into water and drunk without any additives. This was the type of matcha I would be encountering later on in my adventure. Finally, I wanted to see where I could purchase high-quality, single-origin green tea in Tokyo. I headed over to Ginza to check out Senchado, a place that looked like a tea shop straight out of the future. Here they had cold-brewed sencha on tap and walls filled with packets of single-origin green teas. They also had a small selection of food pairings like smoked pistachio, dried fig, and cinnamon almond. After browsing through the packets of green teas, I was reminded of my own tea adventures through the fields of Shizuoka and Kagoshima. I was anxious to get back out into the field and experience true Japanese green tea right from the source. It was great to see that there was still a place for tea in such a fast-paced city like Tokyo, but I knew if I wanted to track down real tea, I would need to leave the city. Just a few miles outside Tokyo, there is a beautiful land of mountains and fields of tea as far as the eye can see. I'm speaking, of course, about Shizuoka. Shizuoka.